Welcome to our fourth session of our Biblical Christian Worldview study. In the previous two sessions, we have studied theology, philosophy, ethics, and biology. In today's session, we are going to look into psychology, the study of mind-body dualism, and sociology, the sphere of sovereignty. These being somewhat difficult and controversial topics, we are only going to attempt to cover these two topics today. Christian psychology, the study of mind-body dualism, and the fallen nature of man. From a biblical Christian worldview, man exists as both a physical being and a spiritual being, in which the spiritual being continues to exist after death. In our natural state, we are in a fallen state, separated from God. Only through regeneration, through acceptance of Christ, do we enjoy reunion with God. Psychology is the study of the human mind and soul from a purely secular point of view. Viewed as evolved beings existing in, with both a body and mind, psychology includes the study of conscious and unconscious phenomena including feelings and thoughts. The biblical Christian worldview of psychology, proper understanding of human nature, does not end with affirming the existence of a body and mind, but goes on to recognize the third aspect of a living soul or spirit within us that is an eternal living being beyond death. The biblical Christian worldview goes on to define human nature is inherently flawed because of Adam and Eve's decision to disobey God in the Garden of Eden. A biblical Christian worldview understanding of our inherited fallen sinful bent is critical to understanding our human nature and our mental processes. As Christians, our concept of the God of the Bible and His teachings in the Bible strongly influences our concept of any and all reality outside of the material world. The biblical Christian worldview of psychology, proper understanding of human nature, does not end with affirming the existence of a spirit, soul, heart, mind within us. The biblical Christian worldview goes on to define human nature as inherently flawed because of Adam and Eve's decision to disobey God in the Garden of Eden. A biblical Christian worldview considers psychology as a study of mind and soul as an independent entity that lives beyond the death of the physical body for eternity. Secularists, Marxists, and postmodernisms view psychology as a study of strictly the physical material brain that ceases to exist at the moment of death. Ultimately, as believers, trusting in a biblical Christian worldview, we may, must make the same choice offered to Adam and Eve. Either trust God and His Word through which He provides instructions, or seek Satan's counterfeit secular psychology. In the end, from a biblical, biblical Christian worldview, believers should avoid seeking counsel from secular psychologists and use Counselors that work from a biblical Christian worldview, such as IABC, International Association of Biblical Counselors. Moving on to our second topic, sociology, Myers and Nobel use the words sphere of sovereignty to describe the biblical worldview's characteristic for sociology, meaning God is sovereign over all creation. Sociology is defined as a study of the human social behavior, especially the study of the or origins, organizations, institutions, and development of human society. The cornerstone of a biblical Christian worldview of sociology is recognizing God owns everything. As Abraham Kuyper stated, there is not one square inch of the entire creation about which Jesus Christ does not cry, this is mine, this belongs to me. 
It is recognition and acceptance that God owns everything, including you and I. And with that cornerstone that we must base the foundation upon which we build our view of this society. Within the pro-choice movement, it is common to hear women say, my body, my choice. What they fail to recognize is God owns not only their body, but also the developing child sheltered within their wounds. If only they could hear Jesus crying out, this is mine, this belongs to me. As God's image bearers, we are instructed to be caretakers of God's creation, watching over it as reflections of God's truth, with our daily lives as expressions of that truth. With the fall, Adam and Eve bought into Satan's lie that they could be like God, thus rejecting God's rightful claim of ownership. This sin passed on to each of us seeks to reject God's rightful owner in each and every one of us, and therefore results in a flawed view that we know better how the world should be ran. The first foundation stone that God provides is the family. God instructs Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. It is from this foundation stone of marriage and family, father, mother, and child, that man is able to establish the rest of society that naturally flows from it. Family is the glue that holds society together. Strong families with a biblical Christian worldview that acknowledges God's sovereignty, recognizes man's fallen state and our need for forgiveness, acceptance of Christ's atonement, and repentance of our sins, living our lives seeking to please Him, are the backbones of a godly society. As long as strong families exist, societies can withstand the difficulties of corruption and violence and crime. When the family falls apart, societal collapse is inevitable. With the breakdown of the family, where God's principles are rejected, we see the best explanation for the failures we see in contemporary society, such as fathers abandoning their families, drug and alcohol abuse, crime, abortion, sexual perver perversion, human trafficking, disease, and poverty. The primary responsibility of the family is to raise, protect, and nurture the children, educating and instructing them in the ways of God. From a biblical Christian worldview, the greatest responsibility of parents is to instruct the children in the ways of God. This is one of the greatest failures within the modern day family. Far too much emphasis is placed on worldly education while ignoring teaching children the essential knowledge needed to know God, the need to accept Christ's atonement in order to spend eternity with God in heaven. Far too many parents drop the kids off at Sunday school expecting the church to do the job. One hour a week is woefully inadequate to give the child the instruction in God's ways he or she needs. Spiritual instruction of the children must start in the home. Failure to teach a child what he or she needs to find God is the worst form of child abuse. With the godless, corrupt teaching being taught in our public schools, God-fearing parents must consider home or private Christian schooling. In today's secular society, Satan has his crosshairs squarely on our children, and the public school is his primary tool for destroying the lives of our children. The church is the second foundation stone upon which we are called out to establish God's kingdom here on earth. The first and foremost task of the church is to proclaim the truth regarding sin, repentance, and salvation. An equally important function is to form communities that work together to nurture each other and reinforce the family. In our fallen world, there will inevitably be families that struggle with sin, which the church needs to come alongside and encourage, lift up, and sometimes discipline, thereby restoring the individuals and or family. 
In the words of Paul, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among the pagans. For a man has his father's wife, and you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. 1 Corinthians 5.1 The church is exhorted to take care of widows and orphans. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world, James 1.27. It is within the church body we learn to and practice Christ's commands to love our neighbor as ourself. The church is the community through which we receive instruction, fellowship, and encouragement. God designed us to be relational beings. The church community is our primary point of contact for relationship outside of the family nucleus. Our service within the church takes our focus off of self and refocuses it on others, emulating Jesus during his time here on earth. Through the instruction we receive through the church, we gain knowledge and understanding of God. No one is an island. Community study under godly leadership prevents deviation into unbiblical ideas. The third foundational stone of society is the state. In Romans, we are instructed to be subject to the government's authorities that are appointed by God. Let every soul be subjected to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are appointed by God, Romans 13.1. We are to obey the laws of the land unless those laws or rules directed to contradict the revealed word of God. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as surname or to the governors as to those who are sent by him, for punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good, 1 Peter 2, 13, 14. When the family and the church are functioning in their God-ordained roles, there is less need for the state to be involved. The primary role of the government is pro to protect the innocent and to maintain justice, primarily involving enforcement of law and order. This concludes today's session.